If you saw my earlier installment on this bookcase, you heard me describe the bookcase, where it was manufactured, how it came to us, and the historical distinction that this bookcase has. You saw me make some repairs to some of the units. And you heard me describe the crown, which was made by a different manufacturer and doesn't really match the rest of the bookcase. In fact, it's about a quarter inch narrower than the rest of the bookcase, and it interferes with the operation of the door of the unit directly below it. There's a concave recess on the underside of the crown, just like there is a recess on the underside of each of these bookcase units. The top edge of the door has to move through that recess in order to operate correctly. The recess underneath the crown is only about two inches wide, whereas on all of the other units it's about three inches wide. That missing inch is what makes the difference. I could carefully widen the recess underneath the crown and make it work. I could also disguise the fact that the crown is too narrow by a quarter inch by adding trim around the edges. But both of those ideas are bandages and I don't really want to do it that way. I pointed out before that the manufacturer of this bookcase is still in business and still makes this style. I could order a brand new crown with the same finish and if I'm lucky a crown made this year would match up with bookcase units that were made decades earlier. But I have this workshop and I have tools. I think I'm just going to make one. I have pictures of the crown from present day and from older manufacturer as well as dimensions from the manufacturer's catalog. Using those, I made this model to go by. The information I have tells me that most of the bookcase units were made out of birch. Not necessarily the cabinet doors, but certainly the bookcase unit sides. I don't have any solid birch in my lumber stash, but I do have some solid maple. Now what I have here on my workbench are some samples of birch veneer plywood, and in the middle a sample of solid maple. You'll see a lot of variation in the color between each of the samples, but you'll also notice that the grain pattern between birch and maple is very similar. What this means is I can build the crown out of maple, and after the finishing step is complete, I should have a very good match between a maple crown and the rest of the bookcase made out of birch. So, I'm going with the maple that I have. I started with the end pieces which have trim on the front and top edges similar to the bookcase units and a small flat panel visible on the side. The trim on the front of each of the bookcase units has a rounded profile and in order to duplicate that for the crown I need to know the diameter of this curve. I started out using a circle template from my old drafting kit. I was at the upper limit of my circles on this template and so I was guessing about an inch and a half in diameter. To confirm that, I drilled a hole of that diameter in a piece of scrap material and then I cut away half the circle so that I have a semicircular template. And then I used that with a better angle to confirm that diameter on the trim. The trim on the bottom edge has a different diameter and it's a larger diameter than any of the circles on my drafting template. So I took a guess at two and a half inches and I did the same thing with the hole on a piece of scrap. And it turned out I got lucky the first time around. The diameter is two and a half inches. I began this task with some rough cut maple stock which I ran across the jointer to get a flat face. After that, I took the material to my planer and milled it to the thickness I needed. Then it was back to the joiner to get a straight square edge.
After I had wood with three clean faces, I moved to my router table, setting up the one and a half inch oval edge bit. There's a small bit of the trim that has this curved profile cut across the end grain. I did that first while I still had the full width of the board to help keep the cut stable. Next, I routed the long edge of the board. At the table saw, I ripped the trim to the proper width. That's more than enough material to make the trim for one of the side pieces. Then I routed the long edge of the remaining material and ripped that to width too. There needs to be a groove to retain the small side panel when the side pieces are together. This groove needs to stop short of the end grain of the front trim. On the temporary fence I have attached to my router table, I marked a couple of lines so I'd know where my router bit is. With a quarter inch spiral bit, I made the grooves in the two pieces of trim I had made. I set up my crosscut sled to cut the front trim to the right length. The underside edge of the top trim needs a small round over and I need to do that before I can glue the top trim to the front trim. So I changed bits on the router again and I routed the round over. Then I turned my attention to the trim that goes around the bottom of the crown. I switched to the larger oval edge bit in the router table and I made this trim the same way. I routed the long edge and then I ripped it to width. I set that trim aside for later. After that, I cut the top trim pieces and then I carefully glued the pieces together. Right after the glue dried was the perfect time to hold the workpiece up to the bookcase and confirm that I had cut the pieces 3 eighths of an inch too short. After recovering from that mistake, I made up the small panels that mate with the trim and complete the end pieces. The panels have a tongue that fits in the grooves in the trim. Next, I routed a narrow groove in the top and front inside edges. These will hold the top and front panels. I did this by hand with an edge guide attached to my router, and although I allowed some margin for error, this would have gone better with some kind of a jig. With the end pieces complete, the next task was to fashion the top and front panels. For these panels, I wanted to use material about a quarter inch thick. After I jointed a flat face and a square edge on a couple pieces of material, I used my bandsaw to resaw slices that were a little more than the final thickness. Then I used the planer and the drum sander to get them to about a quarter inch in thickness and glued three of them together. This made a panel that's wide enough to get both the top and the front. Once the glue had dried and the panel had been flattened, I trimmed one edge square and cut the panel to the final length. This length included enough for a tongue to fit in the grooves I had made in the end pieces. I used my table saw to cut the tongue to the right thickness. I made a test fit of the top panel and the end pieces to find the exact measurement for the front panel. Then I ripped the front panel to that width.
I made another test fit with the front panel in place to mark the full width of the top panel. Then I cut the top panel to be narrower than the total width of the top. The top panel is wide enough that over time, movement of the wood across its width could cause it to crack. When I glue this panel in place, I'll glue only the first couple of inches and leave the rest to expand and contract as it likes. Some of the tongue on either end of the front panel needed to be removed because the groove on the end pieces stopped short of the full width of the panel. I did that carefully with the chisel. Here's the top of the crown upside down in the clamps. When I glued in the top panel, I only glued the first few inches nearest the front. Cutting my top panel narrower than the width or the depth of the crown left me with this space at the back. There's a piece of trim that goes across the back. The piece that I made has a lot going on with it. Here's the visible surface with the round over that you'll see on the top of the crown. There's also a groove that will capture the panel above and below. It's deep enough to allow for some expansion and contraction. There's a tongue on either end that goes into the same groove that holds the panel and keeps everything in line. Finally, on the underside, I'm, I routed a rabbit that will hold a back panel once I have the crown ready to put together. I'll do a test piece of this piece of trim, but I will not put it in place permanently until after I've done the finishing step, because if I cover the back edge of this panel and then do my dyeing or staining, then if the panel later on decides to contract, then I may see a very thin line of light material. So I'm going to leave this panel exposed so I can stain it entirely. I'll stain my trim piece separately, and the very last thing I will do is to put these pieces together. This is the front piece on the underside of the crown. I've attached the front molding to it, and there are side pieces that will be attached later using a tongue and groove for alignment. Before attaching the side trim though, I needed to mill the curved recess on the underside of this piece. The manufacturer makes the recess with a shaper or a molder machines I don't have, or at least don't have set up to do this job. There's another technique for milling this kind of recess, which is to run the material diagonally across the table saw. The blade height and the angle of travel are chosen to get the correct width and height for the recess. I did this in several passes, raising the blade a little at a time until I got the depth I needed. I said earlier that this recess was about three inches wide, but that's not true. It's about two and a quarter inches on the original and on my copy. Before gluing the underside assembly together, I test fit it on top of one of the bookcase units. I even included one of the door frames to make sure I had the range of motion I was expecting. I also set the top piece on it to get an idea of the final appearance. With the underside assembly complete, I did some sanding to get everything smooth and level. Then I aligned the top and underside pieces and attached them together. A crown made at the same time as my bookcase units would have used nails. I used screws. I also fashioned a back panel, but I didn't attach it. I'll do that after the finishing step, just like the trim that goes across the top at the back. The bottom edge of the back panel requires a rabbit so it can mate with the back of the unit below it. I made that rabbit carefully on the table saw. This is where I'm stopping for now. I'm expecting to come back with one more installment of this project where I will deal with the issues in the finish on the bookcase units, match the color of the crown to the rest of the bookcase, and wrap up the other details, such as putting glass back in the doors, trim on the crown, and getting everything put back together. Maybe I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.